Um, this is a regular scheduled meeting of the Franklin Township Environmental Commission in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, PL 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting has been posted. Roll call. Raslin, um, Christine. Seal McAvoy. Here. Diane Podesta. Robin Saddam. Here. Uh, Stan. Yeah, I'm present here. Okay. Walter Andrews here. Paul Waleski. Is Paul here? Okay, Jessica Johnson. Here. Did I miss him? I'm here. Okay, Arnold. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> yeah, oh, Smith. Okay, that should be everybody, right? Yep. Oh, did okay. you call Rose one? Yes. yes, I did. Mm -hmm. All right. Did they, oh, I don't see her. Diane okay. sent an email about 10 minutes ago saying that she might not be able to make it. Who was that? Diane said sent an email a few oh. minutes ago saying that she uh, has some issues with uh, picking up her kids at different uh, okay. places, so she might not be able to make it. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, the chair report, you know, nothing major, you know, we I have sort of some assignments from the last meeting uh, to finalize the environmental stewardship award this over the years and i did do that and um i submitted it to bob and uh i haven't heard from him whether he posted it or not and i haven't been on the site to confirm that it's there but i will double check i don't know whether any of you have seen that or not i did share it with you what what was they talking about walter environment of stewardship award list for over the years Oh, okay. The Going list that, in 2007, I believe. Yeah, the list that you sent didn't that I sent an email to you. I don't know if you saw it. It didn't include last year's inductees. Oh, Linda Williams group and uh, Dave Trigg. They, they weren't on the list. Oh my goodness. All right, I'll pull that back. I, I thought. Well, that hit me, and then something else. I went right out the other year. I'll I'll retrieve that. I'm sorry, I missed that. I'm, I'm, on uh, the I'm on the website now and it is posted. Um, whoa, okay. 2013, 15, and 16 show no awards. Yeah, that's and correct. It ends, it ends at 18. All right, and we do not have 2019. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, well, I'll take care of that. Uh, you know, I hate to have Bob. Uh, I don't know how he would do that. You have to pull it and repost it, but uh, uh, thanks, uh, Arnold, for pointing that out. Somehow I did not miss that. Uh, okay, and um, there was some question about what are T TRX reports, you know, that came up with uh, the Somerset Run application. And I guess we had seen it back at the uh, Somerset hospitality group as well and i post i asked uh mark healy you know what what it was and uh, i think i saw some communication uh from ted with uh christine etc and apparently that you know it's been around for a long time this uh if, yeah. if it's for a minor what they call a minor i guess this one for somerset run was a minor they issue a joint report where you know they all have input and if it's major you know, I guess there are about eight people. There's, you know, people who are township or uh, uh, people and others, they would issue an individual report and all of those reports would go to the uh, zoning board or the planning board. So, but, you know, their information does help us in our review. So, but uh, I was a little surprised that they've been around that long and I, I had never seen them. I don't know if Ted had. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ted, I'm here, by the uh, way. And we had a little issue with, you know, this particular meeting, apparently, when we posted our schedule for the year, we had it on there, but they just posted, apparently, when I said they, the, the, the clerk's office, the first and, and, and third uh, Mondays, and this was sort of off, you know, the, uh, the grid, if you want to call it that. 
And it somehow, but we were able to go back and forth and they, they, they posted it. And so it, it is an official meeting. And I think we all are, are sort of happy to learn that the environmental justice bill did pass. And we could, I think we can be satisfied that we did our part to, to make sure that it, uh, to urge that it, it would be voted in. And I don't know if anybody has seen the final bill or will we see that or where you might find it. Um, Can see? But it should, should be available soon. All right. And one last thing um, you saw about the stormwater regs. Uh, and I guess ANJAC has offered a webinar, web, webinar for 2021. <laughs> so they're really ahead of the game. And um, so, that's pretty much the chair report. I don't know if there are any questions, then we can go on to the um, the minutes. Now, I did um, the minutes from the last meeting and also the minutes from the 8-3 um, the meeting because there were some, I guess, corrections and things like that. And I don't remember where, whether we voted it with the new corrections or we will say we waited until this meeting to report the of the 8 well, 3 meeting. You voted it with the corrections. Okay. Well, you can look look in last meeting's uh, minutes and you can find out. Okay. All right. So those are the, the, the I, for everybody's information, I did share the final with you, and that is what I will ask Bob to post. But uh, for the uh, 8 17 meeting, I hope you all had a chance to read them. And could I get a motion for approval of the 817 uh, minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay, second. Second. Awesome. All right, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Approved. Thank you. I don't know. We've got a little noise there. I don't know what's going on. That's Arnie. Arnie, mute yourself. Okay. All right, and uh, plan review. I'm gonna talk the website, uh, social media. So we have a number of emails in our in our wow. inbox here, but they seem to be mostly from Streams of Hope and the Wyland Foundation. So <laughs> um, I think I'm just gonna pick this first one, and we can look at it. This goes back to that mayor's challenge thing about signing up our city for the mayor's challenge for water conservation. My understanding was that we had agreed not to pursue this. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Yeah. I'm going to. We brought it to. Did we bring it to mayor's attention at least that it exists? We wanted to, right? At some point. I'm. I'm not aware of that. No. Did we want to bring it to his attention or did we want to, because of the COVID and everything right now? It, it's related to water, right? It's water yeah. conservation. Water conservation. It says it's uh, the, Wyland, the Wyland National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation runs August 1st through August 31st. So it's dead now. Um, yeah. Oh. Okay, the, then then the, 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 it's definitely yeah, it's it's over. Um, so I, I was just concerned whether it's related to uh, stream cleanup because of the, the wording stream in the subject, but um, no, 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 conservation, uh, uh, saving water at home and not watering lawns and right, things right. like <laughs> rain gardens. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you. So then, What's the next? Uh, so then there's there's more. Um, so then Robin, you had sent the underground utilities email, right? Um, so it, that was not. I don't know that we put this on the agenda here. Well, so I don't know if we want to discuss that or if we want to put that next week. Well, I think we want to keep talking about underground utilities. I think it's on the agenda. So yeah, it's, it should be on the agenda. Yeah, it's just the details on this last storm to help oh. keep the case. For okay, so there it is proposed underground utilities. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, there's an email from uh, this past Thursday. 
Uh, good morning, dear commissioners. I recently moved to Somerset slash Franklin, and I'm interested in being a part slash volunteer with the town's environmental commission. Could you please share the requirements or process to become an active participant? Lo looking forward to hearing from you. Is right, it the well, person who was at one of the meetings earlier this year? I'm not sure. Uh, it says here that she's a learning disabilities consultant um, and the Atlantic Climate Justice Alliance founding president. Um, she has a, a website here. No, I person. So yeah, I, I don't remember her. Um, yeah. So Ted, do you want me to forward this to you and you can respond with the appropriate um, information because you're normally the go-to. Well, at this point, I'd suggest that she uh, watch for the posting of environmental commission meetings and she can listen in. Who should respond that, to her? You mean the Who board is from the from the environmental commission email? There are no open memberships at present, but she can listen in to our meetings as a member of the public. And yeah. Speak up. So I'll say um, good evening, Maria. At this point, we don't have an opening for any more members, but we do encourage you. Here we go with my typing again. We do, enc <laughs> we do encourage you to listen in and partic actively or participate in the monthly EC meetings. In our twice oh, monthly, twice monthly, maybe semi-monthly or something. Bi -monthly. Bi monthly EC meetings. Um, those meetings are posted on the Franklin Township website. Doesn't it mean bi-monthly every two months? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it should be semi-monthly. Oh, she might mention months. that we don't have one the the first month. Except the early part of September right. is the correct qualitative statements. So. You I'm could say generally the, the first website. and third Mondays. And I'm going to look up the Environmental Commission, and then I'm going to go to upcoming meetings, and I'm going to give her that link. Link. Wow. Yeah. Perfect. If the Sorry, the little drop down for WebEx ruins <laughs> mm -hmm. my clicking on things. Um, I recall that problem. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's frustrating, right? Um, Whether it was WebEx or something else, but I think Zoom has a similar problem. Yeah. Oh, it deleted my email. That's super. No, annoying. really? Oh, underneath. Oh, yeah, it did. Well, that's her. It saved as a draft. Oh, here we go. I got it. Yeah, no, it deleted everything I wrote. That's super annoying. Well, I'll put the link in. <laughs> <laughs> Build it again. And it copied. Oh. Oh, let's try again. Hello, Maria. <laughs> Thank you for your interest in the Franklin Township Environmental Commission. Um, at this time, we don't have any openings, but always encourage active participation. I will fix all my errors, I promise. Okay. <laughs> um, in every EC meeting, upcoming meetings can be found at a below link. Now I can fix all my typing errors. 
We good with that? Sounds yep. good. Yes. Why does it do that twice? I'll fix that. Hope to see you there. Yeah, yes, please add that. That's a good idea. Hope to see you there. Hope to see you soon. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then I need to delete this. Okay. Hold on. Um, back to this. Now we're on to, unless we have anything social media that we wanted to post. No? No. No? Okay. So then we're done with that. So, Plans. plan review. Um, you, you all, I shared with you, um, you know, the plan for Somerset run uh, pickleball court. And um, I asked Arnold to be the lead. And uh, so, Arnold, what do you have to say? And uh, you, everybody else can chime in and we can figure out what we want to say. So, I, I had a hard time reviewing the uh, site plan, possibly due to formatting. Uh, I'm not sure when I in, tried to enlarge it, it was very blurry. But I reviewed the technical review committee's report. Um, I did not see an ERI ERI statement either. Um, I did uh, I didn't see anything about impervious surface amounts either. The applicant is seeking to uh, have plan approved to construct two pickleball courts in a lawn area. Um, and in project descri description review comment one, it states that due to the project size, it is not required to address stormwater management rules. In review comment three, it states the applicant's engineer requested a waiver for the infiltration requirements due to weathered rock being encountered at depths ranging from 12 to 18 inches beneath the existing surface. Therefore, but the uh, that committee, the um, technical review committee, recommended the applicant perform a basin flooding test to determine if the weathered rock is fractured or massive, which would determine if in feasible. In review comment number six, it says the project is located within the review zone of the Delaware and Raritan Canal Commission. So the applicant needs a certificate of approval and exempt from them. Um, it's my understanding that if pickleball, uh, pickleball can be loud uh, hitting the ball. So if it's uh, could be a noise issue if it's close to the residential units. Um, and I didn't see anything on the plan about lights, but if there are lights, um, they could have an effect on the area residents also not properly installed. I see that they... well, I don't see anything about lights either. It's next to the clubhouse, not to home. And the tennis court, yeah. Yeah, I was just putting that up there in case it was. I didn't see anything, but I was just throwing that out there. Yeah. It is all fractured rock, Denise, because it's the same soils we have. Somerset Run is less than a mile from us. Okay. Like I said, yeah, we have a how close to the surface is it? Like I said, there's no ERI report um, and nothing about impervious surface. Um, I don't know if anybody else looked at it and saw anything about impervious surface. Oh. I'm sorry, Paul, what were you saying? There was a paragraph mentioning their concerns about an impervious surface in the some something you just posted as part of their re reporter request. I just caught it as it went by. Okay. Yeah. This is the address. The residences are not near. I mean, I've been in the clubhouse and it's right at it's it's the parking lot, and so they're not adjacent to housing. Well, you're hearing all about tape at 
Yeah. I said right in the, in the review comments. Uh, we'll create 0.08 acres of new impervious surface. Arnie, can you mute yourself, please? He did. But on that first paragraph, there's a mention about impervious. Yeah, it says that, but that doesn't really give us any information as to what that means. And it goes on. Uh, how is the, what's the relevance of that as far as what their impervious surface is now? And what does it increase it to? Okay, well. Well, it depends. Are you talking about the whole? This is part of Somerset Run. So does the total acreage of Somerset Run count? Or because it's all one uh, it community? Would the or does it count just the that one? On, which is the lot with the clubhouse. Okay. I think if you read the rest of that paragraph in the review comments, they address that. Yeah. I think I should add the proposed plans on that. Okay. But it goes on further to say it still is under a certain amount. Yeah, that's uh, an aerial view, right? Yes. There we go. Is it proposed there to the right of the tennis courts and shuffleboard courts? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. There we go. Kind of flip the area there. Yeah. And they're showing the um, the court area and the proposed court area and the 200 feet owners um, line, people who live within 200 feet of the court. Um, I guess they would have to approve. I'm not sure, but they show a line. And there's a list on the left of those owners. Uh, right there, I guess. It's just, it's just I think it's there. just this house. Am I wrong? These are houses, yeah. But the, the owners of the whole association, the HOA, would have approved would have had to approve the expenditure before they would submit to the township. Okay. All right. It's, there's there's works like ours. You wouldn't. Mm -hmm. This is going to cost them a fair amount of money. Uh -oh. And it's, it, you just don't. The board does, can't do it by themselves. Raj Sherman's been talking about the need for pickleball courts for years. <laughs> it's considered an inherently beneficial use. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I don't see any lighting. So that there's really lighting the by the point. tennis court. See the shadows? There's lights here and lights Those are lights, here. Yeah. And there's parking lot lights, but it doesn't seem as though they're going to light up the court. Like the tennis court seems to be. Is, is there a tennis court lit? I can't really tell. Yeah, there's lighting there. There's the shadows that's these, on the poles. Are, but is, the, is there lights in the middle? Then if that's the case, then it does beg the question whether there's a device. 
Ted, can you see on the plan if they're going to take down that big tree there? Are these lights? Yeah, they are going to take down one large tree, and then they're going to plant new trees. As you probably gather, I have the <coughs> the real plan in front of me. They don't really have any notice of any lighting. I'm sorry, Ted, you, you have the hard copy? Yeah, there's one on the demolition plan. There's one big tree and two smaller trees to be removed and replaced. And then uh, page three shows where they will plant replacement trees the area of the pickleball court. That was that, um, They're actually putting up tree protection fence. It seems to me that uh, there's no real environmental concern for us to be concerned about that the Delaware and Raritan Canal Commission isn't going to pick up on since they're going to be reviewing these plans also. And they're bringing a number of inlets and uh, pipes to take up any uh, runoff and feed it into, I guess, an existing, I don't know whether all it is, oh, sure, yeah. it'll eventually join an existing system over to the Northwest. Well, did we decide that lighting is, is isn't an issue here? Of any lighting. I didn't find anything about lighting on here. No, I think you're just going to use this during the daytime. Oh, so daytime uh, activity? Well, sure. I mean, yeah. we started sunrise around here for seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> in the summer, and the people play during the day. Ah, uh, okay. So no lighting issues, no impervious surface issues, um, no tree issues. Um, I, I really think that there's really not much for us to comment on here, especially like I said, since the Ware Canal Commission is going to be reviewing this also. I agree. I agree. Also. Yep. And we also have the TRC report. Yeah. Right. So, well, a TRC report. Uh, requirements, but they're essentially the TIC is on top of the impervious surface issue. As well, yeah. And it's classified as a minor development and it is not required to address state stormwater management rules. All right. Now, I know that the Watershed Institute wants the new ordinance to lower uh, the, the limit below which um, things are so minor that they don't have to address stormwater management. It hasn't happened yet. No. Yeah. So what should our comments be then? No, no environmental issues? <laughs> yep. Okay. I can mention, just reinforce what we've already, already said the TRC report and the pending review by Delaware and Rare Commission. 
Okay. The trees being removed are proposed to be replaced. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if Arnie was kind enough to send me the um, Shade Tree Commission ordinance, and the replacement is based on the size of the tree they're taking down, correct? So if they're taking down six they trees, have to do they have additional trees. They have to yeah. put multiple trees of a smaller diameter. The trees they're taking down have been there probably 16 or 17 years. Oh. Because okay. I watched Somerset Run get built uh, 2003, they started, or 2002. So it's 18 years, some of the trees. Okay. So when you talk about replacement trees, you're talking about their size at maturity. No, uh, their size at the time they're planted. Ah, uh, okay. If you're taking down a big tree, you have to plant uh, multiple smaller trees. That's my understanding. Correct? Yeah, there's a, there's a calculation based on the the diameter. Um, I forget there's a term for, um, it's not the diameter, it's actually the girth. Yeah, the girth, I guess you could call it. Uh, Canopy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Diameter at breast height is at, bre at breast height. That's correct, Ted. Um, <laughs> based on how big that is, uh, there's a whole calculation sheet in the shade tree ordinance that tells you how many trees of a certain size you have to plant to replace it. Now, okay. do, we, do we need to be checking the plans that they're actually doing that, or does the township employees review that level of detail? I believe that's the township employees that are supposed to be reviewing that. Yep. Yeah. Walter, if we're done with this um, this plan review, yeah. I'm off to go to my other meeting, and then I'm gonna, hopefully it's a short one, and then I'm going to come back to this. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, okay. see so you. Paul, so you are, you 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 forward that uh, review. I will. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if we move right along to new business now, um, Jasmine has hasn't shown up yet, has she? Okay. Um, sorry, guys. I I just. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I showed up late. I'm very sorry. I. There we go. <laughs> okay, but let's let's follow the new business um, listing A for energy aggregation. We had quite a bit of discussion, and uh, apparently some local communities like ourselves have been into that. And uh, maybe Ted can share, you know, some of the things that he shared with us online, and uh, and I guess we have to. Do Determine whether where we stand. I thought maybe we had, but maybe it's sort of had sort of come back up. Yeah, what was it you learned from from uh, local other municipalities who are going forward with this? Well, Plainsboro has done it since 2017. Princeton has just recently, or maybe it was in the spring, fairly recently signed their first contract to do it. And then there's a, a group around Montclair and other communities there. I think five towns are are doing it jointly um, in okay. Essex County. Uh, also, we got, I, I saw something that uh, Montgomery has been doing it, but has not been able to get a a new contract that's any good, that's any better than CNG. So they're going to stop doing it. Hmm. I saw that. Now, yeah. do we do we think that community energy aggregation 
is the way to go, or do we think community solar is really the way to go? Well, they're not. Um, they're not exclusive. Not mutually exclusive. Well, that's fair. That's fair that they're not mutually exclusive. That's fair. Maybe it's both. Maybe the answers both are are something we should be pulling for. When community solar means erecting a solar f a field somewhere that then uh, supplies electricity to uh, some part of the community, which would, uh, for instance, well, more than more than one unit of the community. I was just thinking took over some of Damon Williams Park and put up a solar field that supplied the senior uh, residences, the, the senior apartment building there. But usually it means more than just um, facility being served, but you got to find a place to put it. Yeah, this, yes, this is Robin. Um, do we have any big enough stretch of Green Acres property in Franklin that might be? You couldn't put it on Green Acres. Mm. And practically everything the township owns, except uh, the west side of JFK Boulevard, is already in Green Acres. And we know for a fact that Green Acres wouldn't we could not approach the DEP to see if it's doable for community solar. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I've now I've never seen that particular question raised, but I'm pretty sure you couldn't. Because um, as I'm reading more and more about New Jersey's master energy plan and how we're going to get to 34 percent of our energy coming from renewable electric the state is going to have to open some kind of mechanism to make that possible well that's and the bill in the legislature that that's the bp was trying to develop program yeah and i'm wondering if green acres might be asked to categorize its properties and there may be some certain descriptors that would make some of that Green Acres property accessible specifically for community solar. Because where else are we going to do it in town? Uh -huh. um, does Trap Rock have land they want to give us? Uh -huh. I'm trying to think where else are there big pieces with, you know, open exposure? I don't think we have any brownfields. Nope. And uh, no close. Um, we have some warehouses. <laughs> yeah. hmm. The only available space we have are roofs. Yeah, yeah. lots of roofs and warehouses and stuff. That's yes. And that's somebody else. Parking lots. Parking lots. Yes, yeah, around the Davidson. Uh, the businesses they have parking lots like crazy, and they are not covered. Not even with cars lately. No, you're right. I, I do think it's worth thinking about community solar, but we'd have to put some real legwork into trying to identify a site mm -hmm. or through that if strung together could be significant enough. I agree. It's it's not easy pickings if you want to call it that. Yeah. Well maybe what we need to do is uh you know, table this for now and, uh, you know, keep it uh, sort of on our agenda for a while and see what can develop and what we make others of us may come up with. Yeah. What we, we probably that. need is to find somebody, whether in ANJEC or somewhere in the state who really knows about consumer community solar. Yeah, there should be precedence. Yes. Well, let's look around and see who, who we might identify. 
Okay. So did Pendra help us with that? Does the VPU involved at all with community solar? I mean, they have to meet this energy master plan. I would think they would have some mm. interest in it. Now, Jessica uh, sent uh, a chat message that she had to step out because of important call. Um, okay. I see that the next point is uh, Rezwan presentation. I'm not sure whether she has access to share the screen. Rezwan, can you share the screen? Yeah, she should be able to. I have it, so Rezwan should have it. It's the uh, box with three sides and an arrow going up the top. Ah, I have it too, yeah. Okay, I uh, let's see. Well, I'm clicking that button. It does seem a little grayed out. Does someone need to activate me? Mm, I, yeah, the host had to. Uh... Okay, because I'm pressing it and it's not working unless you see my screen, which. So if you press share. Wait, 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 wait. Content. Okay, I'm left clicking. Um, There's a lock next to it. Is, oh, is it one of the round buttons at the bottom? Yeah, I mean, I see it says share content, but it doesn't like I click on it and nothing happens, sadly. I bet you have to be authorized. Maybe we should go on to something else for a minute. Okay. Yeah. All right. right now, since Jessica would be the one to authorize. Oh, dear. Awkward. Technically, I should be a co-host, but I'm trying to see. But I could keep keep going with another agenda. You know, it might be because Jessica's sharing. No one else can. We need her to unshare. No. Maybe you well, could. Yeah, you have the agenda up there now, so maybe you need to take that down. But Jessica has to do that. Okay. All right. Stan, can you do that? I apologize. Re I, uh, reclaim I host role. Here Just we go. Key. Oh, I don't have the key. I apologize. I had to step away because no I problem. Had a, um, uh, we're, we're having a little trouble uh, sharing um, Rezwan's uh, presentation. Okay, Rezwan, you are now the presenter. Yeah. How did that happen? Okay. <laughs> okay. I apologize. I, I, uh, just in case anyone knows, there's a chat um, that you can look at. I put in the chat. I said, excuse me, I, I received yeah, it. I highlighted that, yes. I. I'm... Thank you, Stan. All right. Okay, so I clicked. Do I, oh, I click share. Hello. Is anything happening? It says it's it? starting to share. It's starting to share. Am I? Okay, I don't see it. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's coming. I think. Do you have your screen up in front of you, Reswan? Can you see your screen? Screen, yeah, but oh. It says it's starting, so it means it's in progress. Oh, and I see like a little clock. Okay, do you see this screen, my screen at all? I'm kind of wiggling it around. No, no not yet. It says we're looking at your application. The screen is blank. I'm just, oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. You got it. There we go. Okay. Wow, this is kind of slow. Um, okay, so I just wanted to start with, uh, you know, what is our purpose with an energy master plan? Like the bigger picture? is that you know we're world facing climate change right and so um okay what do you guys see now do you do you see the whole thing it's too small can you make it bigger can you expand okay so i'm gonna just go in do you see this thing i'm i'm doing this for you now <laughs> but it's what? really blurry where are you there it's a little bigger it's, it's really Fair blurry enough. though is it blurry? Does this look really clear, clear on my screen? Um, <laughs> you guys, this might be difficult, and I'm happy to do a separate event that people can come to because I only did ah, a. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Oh, do you see Perfect. that? Yeah, there we go. We okay. got past and future historical emissions, gross positive emissions. Yeah, so the idea is that if we want to stay with, within the you know, 1.5 degrees, um, 
the the sooner we decrease our emissions, the better, right? So we have to take, take a sharp downturn. But the the like if we go really low, then we don't have to get to zero. But the longer we take, the bigger this curve gets, the more now, negative emissions. This chart is not from the EMT, right? The, no, this is just out there. This is a climate scientist, Peter right. Zorzen. Right. Okay, Peter. good. Yeah, but this is like the IPCC. They say, look, if you if we do like to right away just cut our emissions down, then we can kind of like, you know, whatever. But the longer we take, the more we actually have to not only get to zero, but also, you know, do carbon removal. Uh, so yeah. just I just wondered how many people are, you know, are agree with that. Like they think that's a thing. I mean, that's what the IPC says. So is that our stand on climate change? Uh, I don't argue with science. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, because, and the reason I ask is because, so the governor, he had this, um, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, the executive uh, order where he said, we're gonna have 100% clean energy. And here's the wording that I, I think that he said, you know, the governor of New Jersey, this. 2019 energy master plan, the 2019 plan shall provide a comprehensive blueprint for the total conversion of the state's energy production profile to 100% clean energy sources on or before January 2050 and shall further provide specific proposals to be implemented. Okay, so the goal is 100% clean energy by 2050. Okay, and then does that match the, uh, and yeah, they are looking at 2050, so here's the goal. So the only problem is when you look at the energy master plan, it turns out that it's actually, um, it's 80% emissions reduction, 100% clean energy. And the way they do that trick is that, um, you know, the electricity is different and we're still gonna be burning some fossil fuel. So, I mean, I just wanna point out that's just one, uh, key thing is that there's always a shifting goal. Like people will start out saying one thing and then they kind of wiggle somewhere. And so I see that over and over again. And I wanna draw everyone's attention to it because at some point, like what is 100%? 100% of what, you know, what is? Um, okay, so any questions about that? No. Okay, no. Well. Yes, 80% uh, of the energy, but 100% carbon re the, the electricity generation. Right. So there is a, a additional energy that it's not electricity. Yeah. So that, that's where the number is different. Well, I understand that, but that means that um, your emissions reduction, but you're still having 20% emissions. And this chart. You know, if we get there, it this would be chart such is a success. Our, it then, is a success. It is a success. By the time, I think we'll have an idea how to eliminate the 20, you know. It's possible. If, but in, if, in the, test, they electric, say if the electric generation is 100% clean, no fossil fuels, and if everybody is driving electric cars and thereby <laughs> using the cleanly generated electricity, right. I think we'd be in a pretty good position. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Fair Not enough, that but I will be go back to this, this chart is emissions. So I, I in fact, it's, I, I kind of flip it. I would say we want emissions to be 100% gone, but you can still use fossil fuel if you're also taking out, um, you know, if you're balancing it with carbon removal, like you can have, you know, the, the energy doesn't need to be as clean. It is the emissions that need to be zero, not the energy so much. You know, I'm more flexible with what kind of energy you have. And I think it's a it's a strange, like, because the, the, the climate scientists are saying, look, you need to get to zero emissions or more, like 110%. Mm -hmm. But the energy, the way you do it, you could have, you know, like, we're, we're gonna plant trees over here to suck out the extra carbon or whatever. Like, yes, but the, the way you but, do but, it, but, but, Yes. So I just think it's flipped is what I'm saying. So that's an issue for me. But yeah, I mean, it's a huge, well, huge but Maybe to, uh, there is work on technology to essentially extract CO2 from the atmosphere. 
there if that can be made workable and reasonably economical, then we could get to gross negative emissions, along with keeping the pine barrens in pines. <laughs> yeah, that would be ideal. But I'm just saying that we want, according to the climate scientists, we want 100% or more emissions reductions, whereas we're flexible on how we get there. But these guys have flipped it. They said 80% emissions reductions, but 100% carbon neutral electricity. So that's a kind of a flip. Can I can I make a suggestion? Since this is already the master plan the way it is, we're not going to get it changed today. Yeah. But if, if we as Franklin do an intense job at making our township contributing as much as possible to that severe curve down, and along the way we become part of the energy master plan, and that thinking evolves, and they can start to flip it, that's our contribution. Mm -hmm. Not going to be able to walk into Trenton and tell the governor he's done it wrong. Change it, but it is the reason we should be very strident about doing it right in Franklin and yeah. being involved uh, at the at the state level. Fair enough. Good, good point. But I do say we are constituents, so you know we can. Yeah. So we, we we should be part of that voice. Yeah. But it also should direct our actions in Franklin because if we spend all our time working on changing Trenton's mind. In the meantime, we have a lot of very uninformed people in our own town. Oh, yes. And, they, and they're making policy. That's scary to me, too. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so now moving along to, so, um, so there's the energy master plan issue, and they've got an energy master plan. So they wrote up the plan, and I've got the, the cover here, right? But now we have, um, you know, the community energy plan grant situation, right? So if you go to the BPU and, you know, there's a link here, but I won't go there. So they're telling us a community energy plan is a way for a community to work towards better environment for all residents, right? Okay. Using the state energy master plan as a guide to develop goals and strategies. And what we do, what we're supposed to do is create a task force with, uh, you know, really diverse. So we got to get everybody involved in this task force. And the first task of the task force is to get benchmark, you know, benchmark community energy use and production. So that is the task of the task force of each and every community in New Jersey. Okay, and then, so here, here it goes again. So we're going to do energy consumption, generation, vehicle miles traveled, and anything else. And then, you know, it's supposed to help us. So they've given us some guidance here. Uh, They've got the application and the brochure. And so um, when we look at the application, does this come out? Okay. So uh, it's like a 10 page application. It's very easy to fill out. Mostly it's about um, who you're gonna get, like the people, that's a big part of it. But when it comes to the meat of like, what are we gonna do with these people once we get them all together? Uh, that's on page seven. So, you know, first of all, we do the list of everybody involved, um, past activity, what we've done in the past to clean up our energy, and then uh, you know a list of clean energy emission opportunities, creation and emission. So it would be like your conversation about like do we have an in, you know a brownfield? So that's something they would be very you know positive about. That's actually something we could easily get something for. And then you know we got to engage the community and have a budget. So they're they're kind of looking for that sort of thing, and this is their criteria and the, their evaluation is they give points to that. Who's on the committee? past success and, you know, do you identify a, a, a nice and easy win basically to reduce energy or to, um, you know, reduce waste and stuff. And then when we go to, where is it? So the other thing, the, the plan brochure, here's the brochure and it's got some resources and, and it, again, it reiterates, it reiterates, what does it reiterate? The community energy plan is, to get communities to start thinking in a more global way, right? Not just how much energy you're using in your home and business, but you know the whole shebang, I would think. But then how you deal with the community energy plans are about improving efficiencies across the board. To me, these are a little bit, um, a little different because this is like focus on something you can do, like re reduce some efficiencies and thinking globally is just missing from this. This is my criticism, so. By the way, I'm sorry I'm so grumpy, <laughs> but I've been working for six years, you know, and I've, I've talked to, you know, Shiva Kula, I've talked to Randy Solomon, I've talked to all kinds of professors, and I'm like, guys, you know, you really need to give guidance to people to 
just get systematic about this instead of like just working on these increments and avoiding the big issue. So it's it's it really. I, I mean, I apologize if I come across. Uh, Reswan, Reswan, do you think it's this busy work and, and we're missing the mark? This is not what we should be focusing on. Do it like right now, or just what what they're telling us if to do? We're, if we were to apply for this planning grant, the work that would be involved in applying, and then doing the work with all the pieces. Yes. This is busy work, and it's taking us away from the real issue. Exactly. That's exactly what's happening. So, because they say, you know, get your benchmarks, and then the resources to use. They say use sustainable Jersey. So, so going down to sustainable Jersey guidelines, they have all of these things that you can do, and they're very detailed, and they're very involved. You know, and then you go first. You know, you get your municipal carbon footprint, then your community carbon footprint, and here's all this huge ten-page uh, uh, PDF file. Sorry, it's it's hard to see. You know, establish a baseline here, this, 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 get your supplies from here, get your data from here. And it it just feels to me like the the all the, the sources of information are government sources. And it I don't know why they're asking each and every community to go through this long process to fill out a form to each and every one of us approach the same data source for this request instead of them just you know packaging it and giving it to each of us saying, hey, here's your energy use. Like, this is strange that they, I feel they're trying to, like, they're stalling for time or something. It, it well, doesn't they have the staff to do that kind of analysis and generate the report. So they're getting us to be the staff. Well, what they could do is they could just take one city to go through it and figure out the data scrubbing process and then just apply that. I mean, it's a data, it's a data draw. I mean, it's like some data thing. So I feel that's, that's. And then we don't have the resources for this kind of thing. So we're going to get partial and flawed data. And in fact, so, um, so that, that thing I sent out to the group about California, where is it? Um, yeah, let me just go back. To, so this is the California report where they're like power of place. They're trying to, in California now, figure out what it is I want to do in New Jersey. They're like, okay, we have all this energy need. And we have this land and we have to, um, like in the abstract, they say, where's the abstract? Abstract. Here we go. Oh, can you even see this? This isn't on this. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm sharing Firefox and not my abstract. Um, I know, I'll just copy it because I'm in Miro. I'm going to paste it right here. Ha. Ah. Oh, wow, that worked. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the abstract, um, yeah, so few studies have accounted for natural working land impacts, how land constraints on energy availability affect infrastructure, um, you know, so they, they're they doing it. They were like, we have data sets, we have the land data sets, we have the energy use data sets. I'm, I'm right now, by the way, a part-time working with the census. We're gathering all that data and it goes into a database. Like they should, if they're gonna gather all this data from people, they should, they should give it to us in a useful way, and it's it's their job. And that's that's one of the other reasons I'm frustrated because every time I've gone to Shiva Kula, I've gone to like just you know, just other people. It's it's you know it's their job, but they keep saying no, it's not my job. Go get an act of Congress to tell me it's my job because I'm not going to do it. You know. So anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Once again, um, but okay. So going to the energy plan again. Here's the plan, support energy action, and, and their, their, their goal. So goal six of the energy master plan is to encourage and support municipalities to establish and enact community energy plan. So this is not, this is like encouraging us and then, you know, letting us slog through data. And they want to develop a comprehensive community energy plan program. So part of that would be they should be much more proactive with the data in concert with us. So. I, I would say if we apply for a, 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 I mean, I, in any case, I really, that's the goal. It's like, okay, let's figure out how to better work together. <clears throat> you know, that would be a useful thing. And then they say to encourage communities to incorporate land use, zoning and multimodal transportation plans, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, they, they realize there's a land use impact, but they're not really telling you. And then when you go through the plan to look at their, because they've got five um, different tracks or, you know, they decide like there's the least cost scenario. There's a, a totally like no nuclear scenario. There's a you know there's like five scenarios, 
So I took the least cost because you figure most people would like least cost. Then they don't do it in a practical way. They just go, here's a bunch of solar. They don't even give you how many gigawatts. So I just like took a slice there and a slice there. And I'm like, okay, so it looks like four gigawatts nuclear installed capacity, by the way, this is an end use. They haven't told you how much you even use, but this is how much they say you're going to need. Actually, and I was going, sorry, through, through the charts in the, and I appreciate that you went, did you go through the 294 pages? Because <laughs> I was curious. No, I, I, I scanned and I looked for the section okay. on what's the actual energy plan, so I read so that part. I, I focused on the slides that actually show charts, and mm -hmm. uh, because I, and I found some confusion in those slides. You know, if you look at the y-axis, some of them are in gigawatts or gigawatt hours, and some of them in terawatt hours. And yeah. so, yeah. There's yes. inconsistencies. Yes, and, and I think it's just a mistake. It should be a gigawatt hour because it doesn't match up. But specifically this chart, you know, what is confusing about it is that it's suggesting that the energy consumption from 2020 to 2050 Yes, so it's because it's not total consumption, this is installed capacity. And then so actual consumption would be a fraction. In another part, yeah. But well, not exactly fraction. But um, yeah, like 20%. So chart, they, they, they are injecting uh, 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 the actual consumption and they are saying it will go up. And maybe there are reasons to, to believe in that but, you know i'm just saying that um i don't know what i'm trying to say it's, it's just <laughs> it, it's bold uh, fiction but it's it's good to have a plan i think i like the fact that they're trying to make those projections and they are building the laws around that i think the wind should be much more of percentage here because wind is the base load wind yeah. is the thing that can replace uh uh, nuclear because heaven with sun, you know, the only thing it's for sure that at night you don't have sun during the day people have it, but not always, not everywhere. And so right. I'm, I'm going into technical details, but but I just want to say one more thing about understand how you are trying to put look, uh, emphasis on the bigger picture. But me coming from the industry, I've been always um, emphasized that the golden principle is incremental change, mm -hmm. like it or not. Um, and, but if, if you do incremental changes consistently, that eventually you will get there. And when I actually do um, audit of uh, my environmental changes in my house, everything was incremental. I got the solar on my roof, I replaced the HVAC, then I got electric car, then I improved insulation, then I stopped eating meat, and, and there's a <laughs> lot of other things, right? Uh, like I still use natural gas for heating this and that. So, um, but, but I elim eliminated both uh, uh, cars, I have, have now electric, my lawnmower is, you know, anyway. So I think that what I'm trying to say is the, the incremental approach is is valid approach, but it has to be consistent. So, and I, I hear you. I hear you. I just say that um, I'm not so sure, and I still want to know what the end game is as well as the increments. I mean, I understand, like even when you're playing football, you fight for every inch, but you do know how far you have to go to get the touchdown, right? And sometimes you can get lost in the inches and then go, oh well, I've done enough. Maybe Reswan, one of the goals here is to have a baseline for our community. Measure where we are. Yeah. So we have something to say. Every incremental step we make, we're improving off of that baseline. And without yeah. that, it's all yeah. it's all conceptual. That baseline gives us a grounding. So every single effort to, that we to make, measure success. Yeah. yeah so uh, uh, fair enough. So this should scale down and up because then each county in the state has like the same thing, but a, just a smaller version, right? Because each county is going to use, like, assume the average New Jerseyan is the same, right? 
we have our mix of very like active people like Stan who do everything, you know, off the grid or whatever. And and by yeah. the way, notice I'm in my shed. And the reason why I'm in my shed is because the light is from the batteries in the shed that were charged during the day from the solar panel on the roof. And my computer is being charged also from those batteries. And I have the setup to make the step up, step down and everything. So I'm living it up. <laughs> so that's great. That's great. So so the thing is, um, you know, fair enough. If if you want to, at some point though, we have to get to zero or not. Like if you're happy, this is what I'm saying. I don't know, the message I'm getting is like, you're uncomfortable and don't really want to look at the whole picture and you're more comfortable looking at a, a thing that you feel you have. And no, 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 the, 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 the whole picture has to be has to be painted. Of course, it has to be. Yeah. So um, this is part of that process. Like you can't paint it unless you start by okay. So they're saying the whole picture is this. It might be less. Fair enough. So we want to go back to them and say, what are your assumptions of why it's so much? And that's fine. And then we can keep working on getting the whole field figured out. And then each uh, community, because they can then break it down into the 566 municipalities that make up New Jersey. And we know our part and we know the whole. And we should know the whole country, the whole state, the whole county, the whole city, the whole person. Like all of these are scalable and it's just data and numbers and a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of questioning the assumptions and retweaking until we finally get it right and refine it. But we have to be committed to doing that instead of saying, oh, well, it could be wrong. So let's just focus on the increment that I can do today. I, I just feel really frustrated that that will is a way, and I worry that it's a way that you just, you kind of don't like the whole picture, and so it's it's a way to just avoid it, you know. Reswan, is your frustration that with all of your knowledge and your aspirations, that working at the township level is just not the leverage that you're crying for? And no, it's not. It's it's this is scalable at every level. It, like, if you're on a football team, okay, so one of my heroes, I mean, I've got the whole football metaphor going. He's um, this guy, Walsh. Oh, my gosh. Who? Um, he wrote this book called The Score Takes Care of Itself, which you would think is about incrementalism. But he's like, everything, every player on the field is dedicated to a standard of excellence. So whatever they're doing at any scale, at whatever point in the field they are, they're doing as, as well as they can, and it will all add up to take care of the score. But you all know that what game you're playing. I mean, that's kind of assumed. Like, you know that we have to get touchdowns, right? And you really focus on your, your, your area. So the, the state level needs to do something, but it needs to work with the local level. Households, when they're told what to do, need to understand, oh, this is how it fits into the whole. Like, so it's what are you really asking of us? That's my frustration. What are you asking of us? Because I'm willing to join you in anything, but what is the it? So I want to go back to and it, it, because I've been dismissed by Shiva Kula and you know I've I submitted comments to the energy master plan process and of course it's just a random person with a nonprofit like who am I? So I need more people to uh, you know realize that we do need this information from the city and ask with me, and also add like what else, what are you saying that's missing? Like we need to start demanding together. To get this information, then using it, trying to say, well, what do we need as we work out our process? And then, you know, have a dialogue. So it's just like open that conversation up instead of dismissing it. So what I get, no matter who I talk to, it feels like if we're all committed to getting to zero carbon, which we should be like, isn't that climate change the goal? Or is the goal just to do a few things that make us feel good in the moment? Like, oh, I reduced some emissions by 2%. I mean, it's, it doesn't 2% of what? I don't know. I don't care. But it's like, like don't this. Doesn't this structure created in this planning grant process allow us to have voices? And if you, if you look at this process that they're proposing, mm -hmm. not so much for the data, but the chance to cultivate 40 advocates in the community, then you provide them with the data because they've already brought on to the team. Could we accomplish both things at the same time? We'd be gathering the data. We'd be hearing people's dreams, but it's our chance to feed them information and feed them reality at the same time. Yeah, we could. I mean, we could go through the, the painful process of grabbing that data and saying, why isn't this just available? <laughs> 
Um, we, we could definitely could and just try to create our own slice of the picture. And we um, might be changing 40 people, which could be 40 households, 40 organizations, getting them to change the way they're looking at this too. Uh, that would be great. Yeah. I, it, it's so huge. I've been reading all this material on green roofs and the more I keep reading, I realize we need a sustainable development policy at the township level. And we need a green infrastructure plan at the township level. I mean, these are big things. And then from that, we come down to, we need a green area factor so that when we're looking at a plan and reviewing it, we've got a scorecard we can use to measure this development against. If you're taking down these trees, then you can do so much with roofs and you can do so much with this and so much with that. But all that takes a commitment at the top level. And I think that's very important. But dealing with the, the, the reality of what our true goal is, is very important. But we're, we're not going to be able to get the state to change it. So maybe we have to jump in the, jump in the pool. And so, but I, I, I feel we can. The state is, first of all, the state is in uncharted waters. I mean, they have just, this is the, the, Phil Murphy just did this thing. Tammy Murphy is asking for a curriculum, which I'm also working on. That means they don't know what they're doing. Nobody does. In fact, that was one thing that was a great quote, which I have to find. But it, it was basically that. It's like, this is an unprecedented area. All the data is jumbled. We don't know what we're doing. And so my thing is like, well, great. Start from the top, go you know, all the way, all the layers down. Like, this is your opportunity. And they need us to talk to them in order to really help this work. If so they maybe be... something that can be done through ANJEC. Is that an arm that could do yeah. that? Yeah, ANJEC would help. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, because the questions, the, the questions are really, out there. what's what, up? You've thrown a lot of things out there. Do you have a specific direction we could work in? So, okay. So here's the thing. It, when we go back to this, this like total end game that we're, the goal is by 2050 to have this energy transformation, that means each county is going to have a kind of a proportional transformation. But they haven't defined in the plan. So this is one clear ask that everybody should be making is like, I'm sorry, how much energy is this? You know, and so I did this thing and it looks like four gigawatt, 15 gigawatt of firm capacity, whatever that is, and 30 gigawatts of solar, 10 gigawatt of offshore wind and some storage. But that's a lot of solar. That's like, like I said, it's like almost 250, 300 square miles. And where are we going to put that? So, I mean, these are things that, that that the state really needs to come clean on. Like, is this what you're telling us or is Stan right? And they've over ex exaggerated and we have to like, you know, this is a big thing. And then as each each county figures out, then I want each county to part of their process be like, okay, well, if we that's one, it, 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 where will we go? How much I, I don't think that the calculation is, is totally off. Mm -hmm. The calculation and cannot be totally off, and I think that uh, we need to shave off first uh, the area that is idling, which is uh, the warehouses and and rooftops. Now, yeah, not every so rooftop is 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 uh, amenable for solar, and that's fine. But yeah. uh, I look at the satellite pictures, and you know that there, there are some rooftops that are so pristine, perfect, south or southwest oriented and uh, they don't have any any shapes on it and so so the bpu has developed this stimulation program years ago and it still did not get above five percent of of the state uh, generation the five percent is solar and then then you see some rooftops in my in my neighborhood i i check you know and and these are suboptimal roofs and people put solar panel on it so it's so much individual there are some people who so much wants the solar that even though their roof is not perfect, they do it. They maybe pay premium because you have to cover more area to get to the same effect. And whoever has solar is happy, right? And then I find people who will admit that they were asked multiple times and they just rock against it, right? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's the federal, it's the federal, you know. The tax abatement for the solar cells on one's rooftop. What was that? Well, if you tell people that 
uh, you'll take something off their property taxes if they have solar cells on their rooftop that might uh, kind of push scary. a lot of development because it would also push a lot of decrease of township revenue. Yeah. Well, that brings up a question I have. In, re in reading a lot of this material about different incentives for green roofs, green walls, green roofs, solar roofs, some um, towns even offer grants. And what is the status with our open space money? Are we continuing to purchase more open space for the township, or as the township said, we're 33% where we'd like to keep it. Uh, I, we will continue to purchase more open space and development rights on farmland uh, to the extent that people are interested in selling it to us. Okay. Okay. I'm, what, I'm just wondering if, if perhaps we should create either a tax or find another bucket of money that would whose purpose would be close enough to these kind of incentives to make the township more environmentally sustainable, that we could share a pot right. of money for incentive grants or tax breaks or other features. Um, there are a lot of different ways municipalities have been doing that. And Paul and Arnie and I have a chart that was put out by, um, Green Roofs Healthy Cities, I think it's called, yeah. uh, of some of those various incentives and grants. And it's it's creative, it's interesting. But you're right, you gotta find the money somewhere. And I wonder if um, you have a fund that could, just even if we're doing small grants, it might get a developer to do that if it offsets his property taxes or he gets money in the planning standard. The Robin and I and Ani, as we found this from the greenroofs.org, then then you go to Hoboken. And Hoboken has a green reef program with incentives, mm -hmm. exactly as you saw. That's the next step, Robin, after what we found out from uh, um, Bill Browning and Steve Peck. But the next step is to maybe talk to Hoboken or on their website, they have a lot of information. We can actually get their ordinance and look at it. Mm -hmm. well, okay. We can incentivize people for solar and green if, yeah. if the township has the appetite for it. And I think, you know, do we need a baseline to do that? Do we need to do all this busy work? So, so yes, yeah. but so so we can do that. But then, how much will it get us when we maximize it? And if we succeed, and we incentivize them, and we get the Hoboken thing, and we get this, and we get that, and we do all that work. What percent of this will it accomplish? How much, how close will we be to our goal? I will not give you the it? answer now, no. but, but uh, you will get substantial improvement. It wouldn't hurt today. So that's, that's your assertion of substantial. I wanna see what substantial is on this chart for our community. I wanna see that because I don't feel people have done their math and they're just saying, oh, it'll be enough. We'll just, if we just do that, let's focus on it. And it's if, not. We, if we are that far from the uh, goal, then we just have to have aggressive uh, measures. Yeah. And, uh, exactly. And if we're going to have aggressive measures, then it gets the conversation gets really real because people are going to be like, wait a minute, whose backyard? How much area? Where in each county are we going to energy colonize California? Like this is if if climate no, it has to be local. If climate change is serious, then we have to resolve this and we can't put it off by just doing this thing that ends up really being way off. Like we have like who's who's minding the store? We are the ones who are supposed to do this. You know, why am I the only one saying we have to do this? Why am I the only one? Why is everybody else track happy with our with agenda? <laughs> What's that? Are we on track with agenda? Um, so, yeah, and then, if we, okay, so if we're like, okay, no, we're gonna, we're gonna use a lot of land. I mean, it's a lot of land. Like, here's China. Here's, they're very successful with solar. Oh, yeah. So is this what we want in New Jersey? That's music. The government has certain powers in China that it doesn't have here. Yes. It doesn't, but the point is, is this the goal? And, you know, and if, we, okay, I'm fine if we get the maximized rooftops and everybody gets their money back and they get their ordinance. 
But we achieved the bigger I, goal. I th we need to. I I think it's the federal. If if it's, if it's we have a president level. that 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 is training people that you can choose whether you take science seriously or not, you know, I think we have to start with that. But not I'm like asking, we. Yeah. But I, I would. It, it's every level. It's not just federal. It's like here right now. And so here, like for example, Indian Point, they're shutting it down. So. They shut down one and they're going to shut down the second one next April. And they don't really have, like, this is the gas. Gas is just going to increase. Like, people haven't thought. So, solar is increasing. Everybody's getting their rooftops done and their community solar, and it's increasing. Mm -hmm. But is it increasing enough? And, and who's mining the store? Like, people aren't paying attention to this. They're like, oh, we'll just replace it. We'll just be efficient. And this is the actual projection of the energy people. This is all fossil. Like the point here, of doing all the work of determining uh, a baseline energy use in the municipality is then to be able to measure any progress against it, to be able to tell whether you've decreased emissions 5%, 10%, or whatever. Yeah. So, and that's what our, this is my business card, and on the back, we've got the field. This is for America, but you could make one for Franklin Township. And how much, you know, of course, the whole of America uses more coal. We don't. We don't have that, but it's oil, natural gas. This is biomass, which should be, but this is the decarbonized line of scrimmage. And you could show, you know, month by month, like, as we put on new power plants, how we're moving down the field. It's very easy to to show. And again, it's just the same thing. It's this is this. It's like you've got the energy data from the energy master plan. They can slice it up for each township and we can put it on a thing with our decarbonized land scrimmage and watch our progress and be like, okay, we got this many more houses on. So we're now we've moved this far. Ooh, if we if we got all of them, we've maxed out, we'd go all the way here. Like this is a very obvious way to show progress with this graph. It's not like Reswan, when you say they have information for our town. Do you mean they they have it specifically for Franklin or they have one 566 of it for us? Well, you could do it. That would be the easy way is just to take the total energy use of New Jersey and divide it by the population. And then, you know, like population of Franklin, you could do that. That's back of the envelope. Right. But I, if they have the data down by the zip code, you know, PSENG must have the billing by zip code. They could probably just somebody they, could sit there and type. Exactly. They do have it by zip code, but yeah. my end of town is in the Princeton zip code. So it's difficult to figure out what. Uh, well, if you, but if you look at that, do, that chart you, that you, they, they send us to, that, that New Jersey, um, you know, uh, I'll have to look at it more closely, but gee, where is it? Where's the thing? Yeah, this thing where they tell us how to step by step instructions. So if they can give us step by step instructions for us to figure out how to get every data point, then they can be able to do it. Like if we can do it, they can do it. Anybody can do it. Although this is a 12 page document, but I mean, the data exists. We have, I mean, I'm doing the census. There's like data of, at such detail and by city, state, zip code. Um, you by type of house, you know, by commercial, residential, uh, apartments versus, you know, it's very refined this data. But for for us to, you know, unless they're trying to create jobs for data gatherers for 566 projects instead of doing it once, I mean, you would think economies of scale, them doing it once would be cheaper than each city. Doing Who's the them? Who is the them in this case? Is it the VPU? Well, is whoever it, whoever has set everybody to do these community energy plans and has has set this task out for our task forces. Well, to, you know, not, they're just saying if, if you're willing to do the work, we'll help you with some money. Yeah, but, not, but that, well, you know. so, but, but instead of, they can just skip this step. They want us to 1st establish benchmarks instead of here's the benchmarks. Here's how much you guys use. What are you going to do about it? Like we can see you. It's the government. They can totally see how much we use. But I'm so, and then our work. I'm trying to be specific. Who is the they? Is it the BPU? Is it the DEP? Who, who should go ask for the data? 
who has it must be it must be the bpu new jersey's clean energy program is from the bpu and the bpu is the author of the energy master plan although it seems so it's bpu these are the organizations involved so i think starting with the bpu so why don't why don't you write on behalf of the commission to the bpu and ask them for the data on franklin township you know how to ask the question because you 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 know what they probably already have and what the expectation should be. See what we get. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we got to move off of this conversation one way or another. All right. All right. Let's do that. Good. All right. And then, can I get co-signers on the letter, or am I going to uh, can CC everybody or something? I'm happy to co-sign it. Yeah. If you need me, I'll be I'll be willing to. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Reslon. That's great. Okay. Okay. Two co-signers. All right. <laughs> and feel free to jump on whoever else wants to get involved. Okay. All right. So I do I have to unshare now? I guess we're <laughs> Yeah, you have to make me the um how do I do that? <laughs> Up at the top there should be some drop down menus. Uh it says share over in the corner. I'm sharing. Should I just click off? Wait. Yes. Here, hold on. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Pause. Stop sharing. I'm going to stop sharing. That's what I'll do. Stop sharing. There we go. And then, but then you have to make me the. Make the host. It says, it says your host. You're yeah, the so you're still host, Jessica. I I'm, I'm, I'm going to revoke your. My privileges. <laughs> no dear. I'm presenter now. Yay. Okay. Did we go through the municipal we finished with municipal energy aggregation? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So now um, EC facilitate Franklin Food Bank application to Phillips for free LED bulbs. I'm assuming that's Paul. Okay. Paul. Um, I did put a call into the food bank and I got a call back, but we've been playing phone tag because I've got to see if they want to accept light bulbs. And if they do, then we'll put them in contact and see what happens. But because uh, it's not something normally that they would distribute, but for their clientele, these might be a good thing for them. So Mike Rossi called me back and uh, we missed his call. I left him a, a you know, a receipt of his call and gave him all my phone numbers. So we'll see what happens. And let's and so right now with with uh, the COVID situation. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I've been on like a 25% pay cut since April, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that's um, dealing with uh, a financial deficit. So I'm sure some free light bulbs would be a nice thing. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. And they come individually packaged usually. So it's easy for them to distribute. Yeah. And those going to a food bank are in need. So if for any reason, Paul, they they say it's not food enough related. Is there some other organization in town? Yes, Walter, last year we used um, the Franklin Township Women's Club and they made the application to Phillips and then they delivered them to us at the uh, township tent or somebody's garage. You know? The town picked them up and it had them in the town garage and then bought them the day of uh, Somerset Day and we, we impacted oh. them all out. Yes, but since Good we day. Have Franklin Day, day. yeah. It was Franklin Day. Yeah. We don't have the Franklin Festival this year. Right, there's no, that's, that's, no. that was the point, there's no Franklin Day. So yeah. we're going to see if we get a, a separate donation. If it's not the food bank, who else would be a good agency in town that works regularly with the people who would be most in need? It might mm. be churches. The uh, churches, yeah. Maybe, um, you know, or, or Walter, or, Reverend Soares. Yeah, or the senior housing, you know, our public housing, the housing director. Yeah, either one or the other. Yeah. yeah or the nonprofit, though. We should be prepared in case the food bank says no, our charter limits us, we can't do it because it's not food. It, ne it needs to be a 5013. Right. C3. Right. right. Okay. All right. Well, so we'll tweet, you know, I'm, I'm waiting. Uh, maybe I'll get a hold of Mike tomorrow because I left him. Okay. 
this morning, actually, when I found his message on my message board. On my actually left a message on my um, cell phone. Paul, are you aware of anybody like a food bank having done this before? I mean, are we? Not that I know of. I mean, I don't. I haven't re researched any, but yeah. all the food banks that we've dealt with in Somerset County Food Bank and the one here in Franklin Township, it's always consumable food. Yeah. Well, this mm. is consumable electricity. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's true. Good. Good. Well, well, you know, maybe we we can uh, push the envelope here. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what we're trying to I do. Guys, so speaking of financial hardship, I uh, randomly, I was applying to be a TED fellow with this, because this is like a, a thing I want to talk about. But I looked at the list of last year's TED fellows. So the TED talk has not come out yet. But one of the people on the list has started a company called Upsolve that helps low income people go through the bankruptcy process for free. So I think that I thought it was like so neat. Because it's like kind of online and then with some guidance and for, for simple bankruptcy cases. But anyway, just I know the economy is really bad. So okay, let me just write that down. It's, it's All right. Cool. So um, if we're going into old business now, it seems that energy aggregation is duplicative. So do we want to leave that on there or are we going to remove that? I would remove it. We have yeah, I think it's it's. I don't think anything will happen soon. So, Walter, I'm going to highlight anything we want to remove in red. Okay. And send this to the group afterwards so that it'll be easy to see what needs to be removed. Perfect. Um, and then the, the historical list of past environmental stewardship, that's finalized, right? Yeah. So, we need so to that can get removed. The basin retrofit program, is that still active or? Well, the problem is Tara's husband is apparently very ill, so she just hasn't been doing anything for the township. So that's that's on pause. Yeah. So that's on hold. So we'll just mark it complete for now. Sustainable Jersey, no update? I don't have any update, but, you know, if we could... Uh, if we're going to apply for recertification next year, pretty soon we need to start thinking about it. Okay. Right, but do we need to think about it today or? Well, not today, but. Do we want to move it into new business for the next meeting? Because I can mark it green so that it gets moved into new business for the next meeting. Sounds like a good idea. Now we can, yep. we can quantify it right. at the next meeting. Uh, I'm going to remove one use plastics ordinance because that is done. Right. Yeah. Are we have, are we keeping pressure on the council so that it will have its day in the sun? It's not going to slip through the cracks, is it? Ted. Oh, <laughs> well, I think you saw the reaction from the mayor. Not only what I've told you about, but. Oh, in Bill Bowman's article, he contacted the mayor and basically they're not interested in, he at least is not interested in doing anything that uh, might lead to a lot of people wanting to speak at a council meeting when the council meetings are virtual. So my point being, I don't know that we want to mark it complete. We want to keep it a pending item so that the meeting council it, goes back uh, to meetings. If we jump on it, okay. Yeah, no, say yeah. you keep it on the list, even though we may not have any progress for six months. But right, right. right. So, it's, so it's, and of course, there's the possibility up. that the state bill will pass, and then we won't have to worry about it. We'll right. leave it as pending since it's technically still um, not an open item. finalized. Yeah. Open item. Okay, so the Franklin Times articles for the next issue, I'm assuming that's still pending, but is there any update? No. No, I asked the manager about it and he got vague. <laughs> All right. The LED lighting application, is that something that stays on here or should this be removed? Nothing's happening. 
I mean, uh, uh, Shovacola said he'd get back to me, Commissioner, and he didn't. So I presume, and his one reply was, not much is happening, just like the town. They're just, so not, still, they're, so they're all on Zoom here. and they're not doing anything really. Well, I don't, can you explain to me what the issue is? Are we are applying to the DPU for what? Lower We're tower? trying to get, trying to get um, public service to change the street lights to LEDs and reduce the bill to the township because of le less energy being used. Right. Atlantic City Electric has done that, but public service was opposing it, claiming there was increased maintenance, which is not right. You know, he, they're taking their um, the guidance from the president. They deny what's real. <laughs> public uh, LED lamps last much longer than others. There's no maintenance involved. And it should not cost them more money. They just don't want to do it because it'll cut down their revenue. Well, that's like the undergrounding utilities. Yeah. They yeah. Don't want to do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we've heard before that they, and last time I spoke to Shiva Kula, they raised this maintenance issue. And, and that's when I sent the letter saying, here's what it, the lifetime is. The lifetime of LEDs is 100,000 hours. Now, here's another slant that someone. Yeah, I just replaced several. <laughs> yeah. Here's another slant to that issue, though, that someone brought up to me recently, and that is probably similar to the overhead wires. The unions don't want to reduce the maintenance, and LED really reduces the maintenance, so there's less work for the union employees. Absolutely. Interesting you say that, because when we put long life um, lights on the George Washington Bridge, the only one that complained was the union. <laughs> because they lost work. Right. And I think that may be somewhat at play here with these items. So could well be, but it's it's you know, they're fighting the tide. Yeah, yeah but, but also I think that brings up another very important issue, which is universal basic income. I mean, basically our entire economy is built on incentive of you get work, you get paid. So right, right, right. if we want people to be efficient. Yeah. Or, you know, not anyway, yeah. sick income. Well, I, but any, I agree. But Reswan, any change, yeah. you know, just because there, it seems, yes, these specific items might need less maintenance in the overall, it doesn't mean that there won't be new advancements that will require new work. Okay. You know I mean, like, who's to say that there's not an undergrounding of utilities that then results in some sort of um, like solar roadways that actually brings a lot of work? Um, and also brings even more infrastructure changes that are that are stabilized and also right. create green energy. But then those do need maintenance because they're getting driven on all the time. They need to be checked. They need to be, you know, so like who's to say that they're, you know, staying in the past is is not the solution. You know, and who's to say that forward motion won't bring something positive. To, to develop that, it also means it's not negative it, though. Training and educating people that it is absolutely yes. Closing a door. That's it. Right. But if you are a fifty-five-year-old union member and you're planning on retiring in three years, you don't care about training. So right. it's up to <laughs> us to be educated. <laughs> not going to do it. That, do that's it. what we're saying. For the record, like, um, they view it as a negative because they're like, it's less work, it's less money. That, that's no, no, no. But they view it as a negative because it's less money. If you did say, no, we have a basic income. In fact, so I was talking to, gosh, who was that guy? Dan Fatten? Do you know him? Um, uh, the the mm. PC, uh, the, but they do, like, they work with unions and unions are actually pro basic income. I, I the absence of, pro, of basic income, they're like, oh, sorry, you're you're threatening my job. So but I think that's beyond the scope of our work. Right? I agree. <laughs> I agree. That's a societal change, which we can't do. But we're all about. Well, that's what yeah. is. Or universal health health care, right? Let's let's yeah. start this. You know, <laughs> <laughs> going off the track of the oh, environmental boy. commission. No, uh, Coyote, keeping us on track. Coyote program. Good, Jessica. Good. Is that that is that being removed? Or are we postponing that? Well, you know, I'm gonna make coyote comment. program. We, we've had coyotes at Canal Walk in the last month or two. Right, but for the coyote program presentation, I think it should, you think it should stay? I, well, no, I think you should take it off until we find that they're ready to make such presentations again. <laughs> okay. So. 
or should it be moved to the bottom? I, I think it should be removed because yeah, maybe to the bottom. At least, at least. Do we have to initiate this, or is there some outside program that does this that lets us know they're ready to? Do Arnie it? was talking with um, the wildlife people in, in in Trenton. Yeah. 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 So Arnie initiated it. Yeah, he was he was talking with the um, the fish and wildlife people about them doing a presentation for us. So we need, then we should keep it on the list, but at the right. bottom. So I'm. I'm going to Walter, I'm going to make it um, yellow so that it gets moved to the bottom because right. I don't think it's a priority item. All right. So I'll, 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 uh, I'll give you a little key when we send this. All right. Um, <laughs> Red, blue, and green. <laughs> underground utilities. I, I would like to know, we, we've talked several times now about writing to Upendra and the BPU and asking what can we do? What, what is needed to help New Jersey move in this direction? Um, who's the best person to write that letter? I'm so new, I don't know that I know EC speak. And I, I don't know the right person either. Well, I think Upendra is the place to start. You can redirect, yeah. but who can, who's the best, at, the best wordsmith for this kind of inquiry? Underwell you took. Oh. Sorry, Arnold. Well, Arnold's the one that knows all the people there. Is that right? Yeah, he's a DP employee or was or is, mm -hmm. I think so. But th this goes to BPU. Oh, BPU. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. You're talking about the underground you yes. told us now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to take a stab at a letter and you all can edit it? Yep. I think it should come from all of us. So why don't you go ahead and I, I, I motion for Robin to do a first draft. Okay. I'll draft. Perfect. Yep. Please edit Good. liberally um, because I don't know if I'm out of turn or too soft or whatever. Okay. I have a question for Ted. Ted, is it possible for the township uh, to have an ordinance their electrical supplier, namely public service, to replace the bulbs with the LED bulbs at a rate of say 25% a year for the next four years. So it would be a phase in program. Is it possible to have an ordinance that would require them to do that? It's a good idea. My guess is that they would say that's up to the BPU, the townships couldn't do it, but maybe I'm just passing the buck. <laughs> Maybe it's worth a try to try it. And then if it does get passed to the BPU, at least you've got something to send on to them to say, hey, back us up here. Well, the BPU has been in discussions with public service and with the township on getting these LEDs changed over. And that's where they ran into the, the maintenance issue. And then COVID came and everything has stopped. That's exactly what was happening. The township was actively negotiating with and, you know, uh, work, working with Shivakula uh, and the BPU. And there was a hearing. There was one one comment period already on this in, in February or March. Paul, Paul, would it be possible to get a letter from Phillips, somebody at Phillips, one of the engineers to say that, you know, that there is no maintenance issue that if well we did that that's that's what was in my letter okay so so we just need to ask them to put that it back on yeah yeah and he's our contact to, that's that's where i sent the letter to and he forwarded it out to the other people on the bpu commission oh yeah he did yeah. forward it so i think you should write and ask him for the status uh that's okay i, I did that about Two or three weeks ago, and that's when he came back and said, "That's when he told me that when there had been the one public hearing um, over a comment period, and nothing had happened after that. But he was going to push my letter, my new comments, to everybody also. Right, so we've so had an we'll ongoing dialogue. Wait another three weeks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If the yeah, president acts yeah. in ordinance, it might push things. Yeah, and with with the uh, the governor gr gradually now opening the restaurants, and we're we're moving toward a more relaxed area, 
with all the proper social distancing, but this could be a, a new opportun opportunity to get that going again. And, Absolutely. And similarly, with underground utilities, does the township have the authority if it wanted to to mandate that retail utilities had to go underground, or does that have to come from the BPU? That has to go from the BPU because it 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 would raise the the um, they'll they'll claim expenses, raise the rate base. They'll do anything we want them to do as long as they can get it back in an increased rate base. Then everybody pays for it. So then it has Matter to, to, to their heart. Let me, Let's ask this question. Who who do we talk to to request from PSENG for that long term net cost analysis? Right, they're they're always going to claim that it costs more money and they want to raise all of our price, all the the fees and everything because we want everything to go underground, but they still haven't shown the long term net cost analysis. And and who do we request that from? Is that straight from PSEG? Does the BPU have to request that from PSEG? Yes. Is that the county? Yeah. I, I well, maybe we can get through Shivakula to some staff people. They must have staff people. It's not the just the five commissioners. They have a staff. Right. No, but I think I think it makes sense. And and maybe I'm a little extreme here, but I don't know. I had a, a, a I watched the electrical wire get pulled out of my home. The day of that one hurricane, it sat on my lawn for five days. It totally exposed. Nobody came to get it, and and I had to. I called every day and said, I don't know when this wire is going to be hot again, and it's a major risk to my health and safety. And they just took their time um, coming to get it. And so, so my my thing is, I feel like we could publicly go out there. And call out PSENG or AC Electric or JCPNL and say, "Where's the long-term analysis?" Right. And 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 I want to know who's going to be the most effective at getting an answer. Is it well, is the it, other way to is do it this. the Franklin Township Environmental Commission or is it the N NJBPU? Well, the I, the very much just the occurred to me. There's one one other way to do this: is write an up an op-ed to get in the Star Ledger. Yes. Yes. And I think the whole city would join us. Now. We have to do it as an individual then, right? Unless the township agrees. Yeah. Yeah. So here, Jessica, to your point, I've been going back and forth in Wyoming because I know they put in underground line that went down down in a bad snowstorm. And he's saying he's not subject to hurricanes. No, but they have serious ice storms that take down their that's what happened, which is why they're now putting it underground. And for, according to Phil Cameron, I think that the way to look at it is via cost accounting on a utility scale time horizon, i.e. 30 to 50 years. Yeah. Significant operational costs on an annual basis to repair lines. At what point does the cost of status quo coupled with service interruptions exceed the capital cost of undergrounding? Exactly. And that's the net analysis. Hurting. Yeah, that I think we're looking for now whether BPU has the muscle to force all of the utility companies to bring that to the table. Maybe that's the question. Yeah, I think and they do. But then what would force the BPU? Is that is that enough? Is that townships? Is that counties? Is that individual homeowners? I think it's I don't I, or 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 utility users like who? What's going to be enough to get them to make that ass? I think no. the legislature. I think. It, if we got to all our senators and our assemblymen and say, either ask the administration, maybe that's it. They have to ask the administration to deliver it and the administration will turn to the BPU. Yeah. So have we asked that specific question of the BPU yet? No. I don't think so. We haven't. So we're going to start by asking them and then we're going to go to the legislature. One of my other thoughts just now is to invite um, Shiva Kula to come to partake in one of our meetings. Yeah, we have to Instead do of that. Saying, what can they do? What can, maybe we can get him to, to, uh, to join us. And he's we from have a meeting that, that all the new business are the items that need his attention. I just, yeah. I just want to, you know, cause I, and Stan knows this. I don't like PSCMG. And so 
I'm going to make sure that I never be the person to write to them because <laughs> I will get too emotional about it. Um, I, I, I really hated me on many, many levels. And, and this whole wire thing was the last straw for me. So um, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not the person to write it, but I do think that it's a much bigger issue that from a, I look at it from a business perspective, and it's that it's that long term net analysis. Like, how much are we paying? And they want to keep saying, "Oh, it costs money." For how long? Are you looking at it annually? Are you looking at it quarterly? But what about you know when you're looking at communities and overall infrastructure? Your timeline is much longer than that. So you need to look at the whole business, quote quote unquote. Um, I think here <laughs> is 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 some sort of. Uh... Team, because as as somebody pointed before, if your community has underground wires, but some in the power plant and your community, the wires are up and they fall, it doesn't help. I, I right. think that the, the, there must be a decision about that. At certain level, the wires should be underground. Yes. Right. Yes. If if the wire is serving a substantial community, that it should go under first. Well, it, but I think that's part. Yes, but I think that's that's a part of the process, right? As they start putting things underground, yes, yes, it's a, they have to target those bigger yeah. areas. But eventually, it should be everybody, and that's what I want to see: is what's that analysis? Show us the stages. They get paid so much money. I, I'm not kidding you. We we are fully LED, energy efficient, and before we got solar panels, I would get twelve hundred dollar electric bills. What? And yes, we had baby chicks, so we were keeping them warm, but it's still ridiculous to me. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm on a um a, a panel with public service. The, they they asked me to take part, and I've been doing. Everyone's wanted to ask me for my opinions on different things. I'm going to see if that can get me anywhere. Yeah, and maybe this is also a letter to the editor of the Star Ledger. Yeah. We're just it should not be me. It should what? be Stan or somebody more level-headed. <laughs> well, if it's going to get printed in the Star Ledger, it should really be Walter. Well, why don't, I try, why, uh, don't I try, why don't I try drafting it using some of this language Phil gave? I send yeah. it to Walter. He can finalize it, and that can go off from to the Star Ledger from this Environmental Commission. Yeah. Need approval for that. From who? Well, if it's in uh, as in the name of the whole commission, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do it as one particular individual. You know that they may pick it up, and uh, that would go. Yeah. Normally, they they indicate it who signs the letter and what his and what his position is. You know, he's a professor somewhere. Or he's the head yeah. of this, that kind of thing. Who's got the best credentials to stand up to this? My art degree isn't going to matter much to them. <laughs> well, I think if you just if you have it over Walter's signature and noted that he's chair of the Franklin Township Environmental Commission, uh, that carries weight. Exactly. exactly. That's exactly uh, what point I meant. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to make here is that the if the, the cost analysis of undergrounding versus uh regular um status quo uh, de regular dealing with storm damage the more hurricanes we have the greater the expense of restoration after a storm after right. storms will be so that the cost analysis uh should include a projection of the increased frequency of hurricanes that is generally expected. And there's enough this, data as they a result of uh, climate change. Yes, yes exactly. They, they could go back 10 years and use 10 years worth of data to create fairly accurate projections. Except it's accelerating. You got to figure out what the curve yes, is. It is. Well, that's why I say go back 10 years, because then you can figure out the rate of acceleration and apply it to yeah. the analysis. <laughs> well, well, the last 10 years, yeah. we've had Irene, Sandy, and Isaias. 
Yeah. Yes. Uh, PSC and G will say, well, that's an unrepresentative period. And I would say it's getting to be pretty representative. The 100 year storm is now every 10 years. And yes. the snowstorms every winter or late winter, early spring. There's seems we, to be we, one we, really bad one every time. It's climatologist uh, uh, Robinson, what's his first name? Yeah. David Robinson. Robinson. I know him. And then so he. he can tell that, hey, you know, the, the hurricanes, uh, the frequency and uh, uh, strength is is impacted by the global climate. Yeah. Actually, I read, uh, he, he was presenting that the, they calculated uh, for the Superstone Sandy, uh, the percentage of the contribution of, of global change to, 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 to it, how, how bigger it gotten because of that. So. Wow. Well, the storm they just well, had so in Louisiana, next... and, you know, Texas. So, so, so actually, can I just point out something that we've just had this discussion about the um, utilities going underground, and everybody was very animated about how, like, we really got to talk to PSNG. They should have the data. It should be very simple for them. They have the resources. We can get this. We can get the full, and as well as the transitional incremental thing to get to that full picture. Um, and they should have the costs, and they should, you know. It's the same thing with the uh, the end game of the energy types. It's the same issue, and they have the same resources. And it's like PSNG, BPU. Um, it's it's well, really the same issue. PSNG I, I might massage the data to reach their desired conclusion, but it's it's. I would say that to almost say write a letter to the BPU, but copy our representatives in the legislature. Now, the legislature is interested in this right now because of all of the damage done by Isaias. Mm. But the BPU is really the body to both to demand Executive the decisions, a study yeah. and to vet the study to how about an open letter that people can sign on to? I think that might be page two, take the same letter and go out and make it open. I think, Ted, if you're right, then we should not only include our legislators, CC them on that letter, but we should CC the, the editor of the Star Ledger. He knows we're making the ask. And that, that may get some attention. It may not get printed as a letter, but he might put a team on it. Who's so who's writing this? Is it the same, same, same letter? Yeah. Jessica, do you and I want to try doing that together? Because I think you're better at this than I am. I appreciate that compliment. I don't know that it's <laughs> accurate, but I would gladly <laughs> talk with you. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's try Good. doing that. I'm just very passionate about it because I'm sick of watching it happen every year. <laughs> Yeah. And it's getting too, same electric line. Yeah. I know. Well, Ted, I'm sorry if you lost power for five days because of my house. Feel <laughs> fault, <laughs> yeah. I think it's time we tell the BPU <laughs> for has no clothes. Yeah. You, you can't get away with this. Oh, it's so expensive arguing. <laughs> what will it take? You know, that's good, good. fake news. Sound like we have a plan. All right, so Robin, and, uh, I motion for Robin and I to team up to write a letter to the BPU for um, approval by the EC and then posting to the Star Ledger, copying the editor. Is that correct? Yes, yes. We're copying our legislators and legislators. You got a second? Second the motion. All right, all in favor? Let it be known by saying aye. 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 Oh, okay. good, done. It started right. something. Sweet <laughs> cleanup. <laughs> All right. Cleanup. Is that staying on or is that getting removed? Where are we now? Stream cleanup. Is that staying on or is that oh. getting removed? It's supposedly happening in yes. a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. Any updates? Should we have uh, now? Stream cleanup. Do you have updates, Stan? No, I, yeah. I, I've asked Lauren Locker, you know, 
is it okay with the township folks to go ahead? And I haven't had a response. Uh, when did you send that? I contacted the uh, Watershed Institute weeks ago. They haven't responded. Uh, what I'm afraid of, the mayor, as an MD, will say, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, because you can't really do social di distancing. Well, it seems like something you can do. You can wear a mask. Well, people are so trained these days. And people wear gloves anyway. And you're outside. The yes. of um, clean up along the Delaware River, and they were taking um, some precautions to you know, have small groups that have been in contact with each other anyway. Um, but that would kind of preclude individuals going. It's uh, so, more complicated. Uh -oh. So is the next step that Stan and Ted follow up? With the mayor? Yeah. We need an answer right away. Well, then I motion for Ted and Stan to follow up with the mayor. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Second. How do we uh, do we ask uh, mayor because the mayor would be a killer? Oh God. <laughs> That's why I just asked Vornlocker. Okay. Be the squeaky wheel. Go back to Vornlocker. He'll learn to because yeah, we need the movement of. Uh... Public works to help us out when we do this. We'll go. We'll yeah. We'll, we'll go back to Von Locker in a, another step here below above the EV. Okay. So, any seconds on that? That that um I'm, that Ted and Stan are now going to go to Bob Von Locker. If if you need if you need to have the motion, then yes, I second that. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, updating storm warden, one, bleh, storm water ordinance with green infrastructure. Well, if I signed up for that September 15th webinar by Anjek on the new storm water ordinance. Um, I'm hoping some others of you might. I think we'll look. I did too. I did also. I think I, did. I forwarded the notice to Carl Hauk and he thanked me for it. Okay. For it. He said he would say that he was going to sign up, but I think he will. Because and that's more important. important than any of us. And it may inform you know, the idea of green roofs as well, because one of the great advantages of green roofs is stormwater management. Yeah, I so, was going to mention that, that all of the thrust from the people that we talked to um, was that the basic was to control stormwater runoff and reduce it by 80 to 90 percent. Yeah. So I think that boy has been doing a lot on that because they have combined sewer outflow. So they really want to reduce stormwater runoff. Yeah, it turns out that, that Hoboken has been working with Stevens Tech and they have all sorts of stuff. I just started seeing stuff on the Hoboken website. But Stevens in Hoboken, that very good engineering school, has uh, done a lot of work in this area. And we're local. You know, we, we should be able to get some help from there as well. Um, Ted, who did you say was doing a lot with this now? Uh, pardon? Just a moment ago, you said somebody or something was doing a lot with this. Carl oh, Howe, Director of oh, Public Park. Works, who basically is charged with rewriting the ordinance. Is it Carlo? Wow. Robin, maybe we ought to talk to Carl, you and I and, and Arnie about this. Yes, that's a good idea. I think I'll email you and Arnie. We'll make a little meeting for ourselves sometime this week and then okay. we'll approach Carl with some. Yeah, I mean, he knows me. Yeah, and he knows me too. We can ask him some specific questions. Yeah, good. Very good. Okay, so is this, uh, are we leaving this on then as a pending item? Yeah, I would leave it on. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is gonna be ongoing discussion for a while. Right. So then uh, next is the BPU Community Energy Planning Grant. 
But that's tied to new business B above. Yeah, that's number. That's in B. That's the yeah, same so thing. Yes, this is duplicative. Are we leaving it in here, or are we? Well, if it's going to move from new business, then it needs to stay. Okay, so we'll leave it, but it's already been addressed today. Right, yeah. Red one's going to write to the BPU and find out who holds okay. the data. So we'll need it. An um, Stan, the EV Township usage data for analytic evaluation. So uh, in a tradition, Bob von Locker not uh, responding. So um, this item just uh, is stuck with the uh, with the manager, and I was thinking um, to contact Mayor. Hmm. Well, I Bob von Locker did say to write to me that he'd talk to Carl Hawk about it. Which is how long, how long ago was that, Ted? A mm, couple of weeks ago, I think. So he communicated to you, actually. Well, he said something, oh. not very much, but something. Hey, I'm a count. Mm. Well, now it's time to write and say yeah. to connect with Carl. What was the finding? And we need that data for the energy planning grant. Uh, I mean, it's great that they they uh, provided response of some sort, but did they say when uh, the data will be given to us or when uh, they will be able to close could that? You, could you follow up with Born Locker Ted and ask him how he made out with Carl? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, Ted. We so need to make a motion. Oh. Okay. So then the, ne the next is sustainability officer. I think this one, we have to wait a little bit. Apparently, according to Born Locker, he likes the idea, but he needs to see how the tax collection is coming in. Right. So I'm going to mark it yellow so that it's moved to the bottom. So what he. Which it is already. I'm going to mark it yellow since it's still, um, it's something that's got to wait. Okay. Good. Um, and then I guess we're on to the, I'm going to motion that we open to the public. Second the motion. Yep. Move to second and we open the meeting to the public. All in favor say aye. 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 We don't have any public, so <laughs> no attendees. <laughs> Uh, so we, I motion to close our public discussion. <laughs> second the motion. All good. Then move to second that we close the public session. No, nobody present. So all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Close. We'll make a motion.